Oh, goodness, I've got some technical difficulties. I do not want to rotate my device. So I think we're okay now. Um, I'm going to put this back in the stand. This is not as smooth as I would have liked to have it to begin with. However, I am super excited to be here for my very first, first Facebook Live with my virtual coffee in a card class. So the class today is going to be on wishes and wonder. And here it is in the catalog. And what I wanted to show you about the card today is to use this catalog as a idea book. So my card for today came from the back of the catalog. This is it right here. I'm also going to show you how to make things work if you don't have everything that you need. Because you see, I am in Holland right now and I don't have everything that I need. So let's get started. The people who are doing my coffee in a card virtually get a, 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 an envelope in the mail with all the cards for the month. Now, I forgot to take my card with from Canada. So I had to use, instead of using the plaid paper from the current Christmas catalog, this is the plaid paper from last year. So we have to decide which one we're going to use. So the card base is Cherry Cobbler, and it is eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. Then we have a cherry cobbler piece like this, and it is, oh, I have to, I should grab my ruler. I think it is three and a quarter by four and a half, and the pattern paper is three inches by four and a quarter. And what we're first going to do is just put the pattern paper on top of that cherry cobbler piece, just offset like this. I have to decide whether I want this. I definitely don't want that. Or do I want this one? Okay, the next piece that we're going to have is a um, piece like this. And so what I've done, and I will show you, I do not have an embossing gun here. So I was playing around a little bit, and this is the one that turned out well. This is the one that didn't turn out well at all. So you see how it's all bumpy and the back delaminated. So did you know that our foil paper has this paper on the back? It comes right off. So this happens if you overheat your embossing. Well, let's see if I can show you what I did. I'm just looking for, yep, yeah, there it is. All right, so we're starting with some brushed gold metallic paper. Then you need some Versamark, and then we need the stamp from here, this little branch one, okay? I have some stuff in here for some cards for next week. The thing that you wanna be careful with when you're stamping on metallic paper is that you don't slide around. Okay, here. I don't have as many blocks as I do at home either. So you're going to take some Versamark. Tap, tap, tap. And then when you stamp on your foil paper, you want to hold it steady, straight up and down so that it doesn't slide around. I use a coffee filter, but in Holland, I didn't have the coffee filters that I wanted. I only had this kind. Usually you should have a basket kind, so I just made do, tore it open. And then you're gonna pour on your embossing powder and over the coffee filter. The coffee filter will catch your extra powder. And then tap it around. And then give it a really hard flick. You really have to aggressively flick to get the excess powder off. And then before you do anything else, make sure you put that powder back in the little pot so that you don't knock it over. And then put the lid on it and put it safely away. Trust me, I know this because my powder has gone flying at times. And now I am using a paint stripper gun, okay? The problem with one of these guys is that they're pretty strong. So I'm going to put it on a low setting and keep a very careful eye on it. As soon as it starts to change, you want to move away so it doesn't buckle. I don't know if I'm going to manage it. All my pieces of paper are flying away. That is not good. There. And then you want to take a close look at it to make sure that there's no dark spots. And it looks like I did a good job. We'll put that out of the way. And then 
we're going to take this framelit right here and we're going to cut it out. Now I actually went a little bit close to the edge there. That's not good. I do not have the new um, stamp and die cut machine. I have the old Big Shot here. I haven't bought a new one yet. And so all you do, I'm not gonna actually do it, but you take your, the old Big Shot has the little thin die adapter, then a clear plate. Then you're gonna lay this on here. And I'm gonna have to do it like this. It's not ideal, but you know what? That's okay. And then we're gonna take the whole thing. Maybe I will show you. So really, the Big Shot or the die cutting machine is like a great big roller press. And I don't know if I went too close to the edge. And it cuts and it embosses, okay? So let's have a look, see what happened here. If I made it too close to the edge or not, we'll find out. Yeah, well, actually, you know what? It's perfect. I got lucky. So there we go. So that's the one piece that we need. So I'll move the big shot out of the way. And now we can start building our card. The other thing that I did was there's a really nice big framelit tag that comes in. See, and it has that stitch detail at the bottom and a little zigzag. This paper came from the Wishes and Wonder suite. And I just, when you do this, you want to make sure that your words are straight. Okay, so let's just pretend I ran that through the big shot and now I have my piece. And you can see how nice that detail is on the bottom. So the next step, I think we'll just lay this together and we'll see how, which paper I like better. I also stamped deer. You should have had a piece of crumb cake cardstock and then we're going to stamp a deer. And I had said that you could do it in Memento, but I also did one in Early Espresso. So I'm going to do this one in Early Espresso. And then you can tell me whether you like the Early Espresso better or the Memento Black. So nice, even pressure. So there it is in Espresso. And let me show you both of them. I have two cut out. One in black, one in espresso. Now, which one do you like better? Okay. So since I don't have my card example up, I'm kind of winging it. So we're going to take our card base. I kind of do like this dark, this one. So I think we're going to go with that. And I also like the black deer better. So I'll wait and see what you guys say for voting. But I like the dark one. So let me see. We're going to use our stamp and seal. And there we go. Does anyone miss the click, click, click of the snail? I, uh, I kind of do. So that's going to go on a little bit of an angle. If you don't like things offset, then, then you know, don't do that. Do whatever you want. And it's also going to go, this is gonna be popped up, okay? I need a few dimensionals. And, uh, there. I'm very curious as to how this YouTube channel is going to go, if people are gonna be able to find me on here or not. But I am excited I'm going to have a regular consistent presence here. I've always kind of neglected my YouTube channel, so this will be kind of cool. I mean, you could also decide, there's always ways to step up a card. You could adjust the background if you wanted to, but we're just gonna leave it the way it is. So the next step is this pretty tag, and you want to have this, this edge level with your pattern paper up there, okay? There. This stamp and seal I have found to be a really nice, strong adhesive. So there we go. The next thing is our embossed gold foil piece. And I want it to be a little bit off the side like that. A bit higher up because I'm getting ahead of myself. 
I almost forgot. I had to steal from another card, and I think my heat gun blew this off. Oh yeah, it's behind my... It's a good thing I saw things flying when that heat gun was going, because this is one of the things that went flying off my table. You can see that this is too big. It bothers me greatly. This is the only piece of green ribbon that I have with me in Holland, but I need to trim it. It was meant for another card, but, you know, there are certain things that you simply can't substitute, right? Like this is the color that I wanted. It's part of the suite of products. And yeah, I'm just gonna cut it right here. That's why when I buy things in the catalog, I like to buy things by suite so that everything kind of coordinates rather than getting a little bit of this and a little bit of that there. And what I'm gonna do, I don't often tape my ribbon down. I usually tuck it in behind, but I'm just putting a little bit of the stamp and seal there. And then I'm going to press that down. And the next thing we're going to do is put this about there. So you can see how this card is coming to life with all the details. It's a really pretty card. And like I said, the inspiration was right on the back of the holiday catalog. That's why I love what I do. I mean, often I am now inspired myself, but it's really nice to be inspired by the catalog because things are a lot different. Like you can see it on the back of the catalog, but it's even nicer when you make it yourself. So now the deer is gonna go on and we're gonna pop him up, okay? And use, I'm gonna use, well, no, I can use the big ones, I guess. I was gonna use mini dimensionals, but the big ones work just fine. Dimensionals are also something that you cannot get anywhere else. I have come to learn that the hard way as well. The other thing that I've come to appreciate is our, and I always have appreciated this, but our coordination, you know, if you don't have your card stock and ink to match, it's so hard to make a nice card. I was trying to make cards for um, next month and I just didn't have the right colors and my card just isn't what I want it to be. And it can be a little frustrating. So the other thing, I need to put a Merry Christmas on here, but take a look. Let's look at the finished card. Let me just grab the catalog. Oops. Here's the finished card and you see the Merry Christmas on there? It comes from this set right here. So here's that Merry Christmas and it comes with those beautiful bells. I did not purchase this one. I kind of, every time I decide not to buy something, I usually regret it. However, I decided that the peace, love, and joy here from the Dove of Hope works just fine. So let me see if I can, oh my goodness, I think my little piece of white went flying too. Hmm. I have one already stamped and cut out, but I, I smudged it a little bit. And so I was going to tell you guys, when you stamp something, just let it dry for a minute before you keep going. I'm going to look on the floor to see if I can find my piece. Let me have a look. No. No, it went flying who knows where. So we're just going to use this piece, even though it has a little smudge on it. That should be fine. And then the last thing we need is a piece of gold cord. I took mine from the Tag Buffet kit, but it does come with this green ribbon in a bundle. Okay. So I'm just going to tie a nice bow. And the best way to adhere these bows is with a glue dot. I have lots of glue dots this time. And thanks to Mardette for supplying me with dimensionals. Okay, let me see if I can find my glue dots. Hmm. You know, every time you think you're perfectly organized and, and prepared, it's, oh, there they are. Okay, super. So our glue dots come in a box like this and they're on a roll. And the trick with glue dots is to always make sure your glue dot is covered, okay? So it doesn't get stuck in the box. And you just wanna press your bow right on there and then pull it off. And there it comes with the glue dot, okay? And I'm going to put it like so. And now we're going to just layer that on top with a couple of dimensionals. And then all we have to do is finish off the inside of our card. So the neat thing about this coffee in a card, virtual coffee in a card, is that you get all the supplies 
in an envelope for the whole month. And then you can just easily, instantly gratified, make cards with me. How cute is that? Now, we're not quite finished. We wanna open it up and put something in the inside. Now, I often just use computer paper for the inside. I'm splurging today with a piece of Whisper White. And I will still just attack it on at the top because I think it's really nice to, um, um, let me think. I like it when someone can choose to give my card away again and re-gift it. So they can just take that insert out. And um, let's see if we can we'll use, may the wonder of Christmas stay with you throughout the coming year. Okay, there we go. This is a really, really nice stamp set, I have to say. I'm, I'm really happy with it. Let's see. I like that postage stamp. I think we'll use Cherry Cobbler if I can find it. I have a little Cherry Cobbler mini ink spot. So today is December 1st, and that means that as demonstrators, we get to pre-order out of the new catalog. There. That's really pretty, isn't it? And then I don't usually do this many, but I really want to do that North Pole stamp on the corner. Well, you know what? Maybe we'll do that on the envelope. Yes. Okay. So we'll flip this over. Just put some adhesive on the top. If your adhesive isn't going all the way, just advance the roller a little bit, and then you're good to go. All right. And then this goes in the middle. So... Isn't that just so pretty? And it's just such a simple thing that the ink color matches the cardstock. And honestly, it's one of the things I love the most about Stampin' Up. It's a simple thing. I just love the way everything coordinates. And though even this paper is from last year, you know, you've got the shaded spruce that's in the paper. It's in the ribbon. The gold embossing powder matches. It just really gives you a lovely look. And then the last thing I want to do is I've got an envelope here. And I'm going to take the special delivery stamp. Let's see here. So next week we'll be making another card every week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's actually 4 p.m. in, in uh, Holland. I was a little bit concerned because the light is starting to fade here and I really don't have a great lighting system set up here. So I'm hoping it works and I'm also hoping that the internet is good enough. There, how cute is that? You know that you have happy mail when you get something like that in the mail. And then I'm also gonna put another one up here. Oh, and I stamped it in brown, that's okay. So that's where we have it, we're all finished. So I think this is pretty awesome. I am just gonna flip the camera so that I can say hello to you guys. And next week will be a surprise. If you want to see the other cards, you can see them on my blog, um, thepamperedstamper.com. And I'm going to see if I can flip the camera. Yes. There we go. All right. Awesome. I just wanted to say hi. It's always nice when you can see the face behind the hands, um, even just for a minute. Um, yeah. So thank you so much for joining me on my first time here on a YouTube Live. I hope that this virtual coffee and a card grows and that we just have a lot of fun together and that we can feel like we, um, yeah, that you belong and that you feel connected because this whole COVID thing is starting to get old and we're all tired of, um, yeah, of this, this dragging on. So yeah, I look forward to seeing your comments and you know, I've never done this YouTube live thing before. So we'll see if I can figure out on how to end it because this is different than Facebook, which is what I'm used to. And maybe I should have done a little bit of research first, but you know, I'm a crazy squirrel and I just jump in with both feet. So I'm going to flip the camera so that at least you don't see my face while I'm trying to figure this out. And then here is, it's in Holland. It is a windy, crazy day. So this is my view today, a little bit somber, but it's not as cold as it looks. It's about nine degrees. So, all right, I'm just going to see if I can finish this. Yes. Okay. Have a super day, guys. Bye.